You can come out. I'm not hiding. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 guest star voice actors in Invincible. <laughs> Go! We're machines, and the sooner we recognize that, the sooner we'll reach our true potential. We're not open! For this list, we'll be looking at stars who have lent their voices to this animated superhero series. We're not talking about central cast members like Steven Yeun, Sandra Oh, or J.K. Simmons, but rather smaller supporting players and one-off cameos. In case you haven't seen the first season, there will be spoilers. Who would you like to see guest star on Invincible? Let us know in those comments below. Number 10 Guardians of the Globe Guest Stars What do Invincible and The Walking Dead have in common? Both started in the comics, neither will hesitate to act someone off, and all seven Guardians of the Globe are voiced by Walking Dead cast members. <laughs> Red Rush, get this guy out of here. Lauren Cohen brings Maggie's strength to War Woman, Michael Cudlitz injects Abraham's humor into Red Rush, Chad Coleman channels Tyrese's unbendable spirits as Martian Man, Sonequa Martin Green applies Sasha's charisma to Green Ghost, and Lenny James finds Morgan's resourcefulness in Darkwing. I've got you, we're gonna be fine. We'll get out of this. In addition to The Immortal and Aquarius, Ross Marquand can also be heard as Biplane, Kirsk, and Rudy. It was an act of mercy. Given their Walking Dead roots, it's not entirely surprising that the Guardians all perish in the pilot, but at least Mark Grayson has had slightly better luck than Glenn Ree. Number 9 Ezra Miller as D.A. Sinclair. Seeing how Miller is the DCEU's vision of The Flash, one might expect him to voice Red Rush here. My problem? My problem is this school of idiots. Of course, that probably would have been a little too obvious. Miller trades in Barry Allen's quick one-liners for D.A. Sinclair's slimy depravity. This mad genius seeks to improve humanity by turning people into robotic zombies known as Reanimen. Although his plot is downright diabolical, Sinclair is really just a scrawny whim with a god complex. A rematch. Excellent. I'm afraid I witnessed that first scrap and made a few small improvements. Miller supplies Sinclair with a nasally voice, but he never goes too over the top. While Sinclair sounds nitty, Miller's line delivery makes the villain genuinely intimidating. He does an effective job at making the audience loathe Sinclair, reminding us of every know-it-all kid we put up with at school. You brutes have set humanity back decades! Number 8, Jonathan Groff as Rick Sheridan. William! Come here! Speaking of Reanimen, Rick Sheridan is one of many unfortunate souls who wind up in Sinclair's underground lair. Rick is one of the most tragic cases, as he had everything going for him. It's also one of the best med schools in the country. That's why I arranged a little biology class sit-in for you guys. He stood up for others, was good-looking without being egotistical, and had a blossoming romance with William. Jonathan Groff, who voices Rick, and Andrew Reynolds, William's voice actor, both come from Broadway backgrounds, even sharing a role in common. After Graf left Hamilton, Reynolds took his place as King George III. While Rick possesses all of Graf's charm, his twisted fate is like something out of Mindhunter. Even when Rick is reduced to a grunting cyborg, Graf unearths his humanity. Uh, are you crying? Hopefully Graf will be back next season. Number 7 Justin Roiland as Doug Cheston. <laughs> Oh, hey, excuse me, sup ladies? Doug Cheston is another student who gets the reanimate treatments. While he probably didn't deserve such a grisly end, Doug is the epitome of every privileged jerk you've met on a college campus. Doug does have one thing going for him. He's voiced by Justin Roiland, the co-creator of Rick and Morty. Roiland also voices that show's titular duo. Makes me a little sad to hear a Morty cop calling Morty's animals. Well, it makes me sad to hear another Rick cop buying into his sensitivity training. As Doug, Roiland strikes a balance between Rick and Morty. Doug kind of sounds like an older, more confident Morty, 
He also encompasses Rick's reckless cockiness with a belch mid-sentence thrown in for good measure. There's a touch of Corvo from Solar Opposites in there as well. Where Rick and Corvo usually conduct the experiments though, Doug is at the mad scientist's mercy here. I'm what you're missing! Me and my huge <laughs> trust fund. Number 6, Jimon Honsu as Martian Emperor and Emperor Slash. Welcome to Mars, Earthman. Jimon Honsu is known for making brief yet memorable appearances in superhero movies. He popped up as Korath the Pursuer in Guardians of the Galaxy and has played two characters in the DCEU, the Fisherman King from Aquaman and the Wizard from Shazam. Honsu also takes on multiple roles in Invincible, voicing two alien emperors. The Beninese American actor brings his booming delivery to Slash, a flaxen soldier bent on invading Earth. As Omni Man tells Slash, though, Earth already has a conqueror. Honsu also resurfaces as the Martian Emperor who orders the execution of the astronauts that Mark is tasked with protecting. I am the Emperor of Mars. Of course I've heard of you! Through both roles, Honsu commands the screen with his powerful voice, although it's hard for even the most imposing leader to compete against a Viltramite. Number 5, Clancy Brown as Damien Darkblood. Seven superheroes murdered. In the animation realm, Clancy Brown is best recognized for voicing Mr. Krabs. Credit card bills. Well, I knew this was coming. Let's see what the damage is. You've also likely heard his deep voice in a variety of superhero shows and movies. He brought the devilish delivery to Lex Luthor in the DCAU. Brown is no stranger to Marvel either, most notably voicing the fire demon Surtur in Thor Ragnarok. He plays yet another red demon in Invincible. No, not Hellboy, although Damien Darkblood does share a certain resemblance. Didn't kill Guardians. Didn't try to kill Nolan. I know. At his core, though, Darkblood is a hard-boiled detective, another type of role that Brown is well-suited to play. Although Darkblood sounds as brutish as he looks, he's an intuitive mind who can see evil hiding in plain sight. Brown's performance as Darkblood is chilling in more ways than one. What are you doing in my house? Seeking information, clues, answers. Number four, John Hamm as Steve. Sucks to be you. <laughs> I'll be living it up in London, seeing the sights, eating Indian food. We could totally see John Hamm playing a superhero. In Invincible, though, he's just an ordinary guy named Steve. Well, ordinary might not be the right word, as not everybody is a Secret Service agent. Nevertheless, Steve is a relatable character, eager to go on vacation and bond with his stepson. When he walks across that stage and accepts that diploma, that is my son. Whenever Steve shows up, the audience almost forgets that they're watching a superhero show. Then we're quickly reminded when the Mauler twins attack the White House or a Bergamot trash bag lands at Buckingham Palace. Although it can feel like Steve is on a completely different show, Ham's passionate performance makes us want to know more about him and his family. Superheroes aren't the only ones in this universe with interesting lives. You called me dad. Number three, Mark Hamill as Art Rosenbaum. Prom dresses by day, indestructible super suits by night. In addition to his iconic turn as the Joker, Mark Hamill has also voiced the Hobgoblin, Solomon Grundy, and a variety of other supervillains. Hamill takes a break from laughing maniacally in Invincible, voicing mild-mannered Taylor, Art Rosenbaum. A costume designer for superheroes, you can tell that Art has been in this business for a while based on his older appearance, gravelly yet enthusiastic voice, and friendly rapport with figures like Omni-Man. This is the oldest blood on the suit. Nolan struck first. Hamill brings great empathy to the character, making our hearts sink when it looked like Nolan might crush Art to keep his secrets. Thankfully, Art gets off with an intimidating chat, although we can sense every ounce of fear in Hamill's voice. Now we just need Hamill to voice a villain in season two. Well, that'd be a lesson to you. 
Never piss off your tailor. Number two, Mahershala Ali as Titan. Your lives worth minimum wage. Or do you want to fire your guns in the air so you tried your best and we all walk away happy? Before he was cast as the MCU's Blade, Mahershala Ali played Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes in Luke Cage. Titan is also so different from Cottonmouth and yet so similar. Although Stokes doesn't turn to stone like Titan, neither character is afraid to get blood on their hands. I'm not a criminal. I just owed one money and now I can't get out. So? So aren't you a hero? Both know what it's like to get stepped on, fueling their ascension to the top of crime organizations. The difference is that Titan's motivations also stem from his daughter, who he wants to keep safe at all costs. Ali breaks through Titan's rough exterior, giving the character a soft spot for family. Is he a good guy? That's what people say. Are you a good guy? I... In order to survive his business, though, Titan must leave his sensitive side at home. It's yet another layered performance from this two-time Oscar winner. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Seth Rogen as Alan the Alien I, hold on, I Are you using your time out? With some of this show's cast members, it can take a while for the viewer to connect the voice to the actor. However, we recognize Seth Rogen's voice from the second Alan opened his mouth. While technically Alan communicates with Mark telepathically, but you get what we're saying. Request from Urath for evaluation. Urath, this is Earth. Earth. Yes! Rogan is not only perfectly suited to voice the down-to-earth Ellen, but his casting is something of a clever in joke. Rogan previously voiced a wisecracking alien in Paul, where Simon Pegg's character can be spotted wearing an invincible t-shirt. Ten years later, Rogan finds himself voicing another alien on Invincible, which he also executive produces. No one's even heard of a Viltrumite abandoning their post. It's insane, it just doesn't happen. We'd say things have come full circle, but we're still waiting for Rogan and Evan Goldberg to make that live-action Invincible movie. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.